Hello, welcome to another Gun and Battle Operation 2 video. That is the Casatria. And uh, man, I've been itching to play this suit some more recently because, uh, <laughs> let's see, I think uh, a good couple of our friends have this suit and they want to play it as well. So, you know, I've been biding my time to play this. You know, every match I go to, you know, before the Sinandra came out, everybody wanted to pick the Casatria because it's a really damn good support. If you guys haven't seen my videos on the Casatria already, uh, yeah, it's just a slam dunk of a, a suit. Easily the best support in the game. Uh, there are ways to get around it, of course. Uh, it's not super oppressive. It's oppressive if you ignore it, because, uh, yeah, it will uh, fuck the shit out of your generals. But, uh, yeah, and the best thing is I finally got a chance to play it, because uh, now that the uh, the Sinanju is out, everybody wants to play the Sinanju. So, okay, yeah, that's fine by me. I get to play the Ksatria and go shit on some Sinanjus, maybe. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> And uh, I do have, uh, this is a military base match, 700 obviously, and uh, let's see, we have a Sinanja in our team, we have a Moon Gundam, a EZZ, so pretty pretty melee oriented team, and we have a Super Gundam, which uh, I picked the Kasatria first and then he went with the Super Gundam. Uh, I don't mind the Super Gundam at 700, but uh, recently I've been seeing a lot of people wanting to double up with it, they've been dying to use the Super Gundam at 700. Uh, which is understandable if you're doing a 6v6 and you know maybe you maybe that extra support for a long range map but if there's already a Kasatria on your team you're kind of you're kind of good cuz the Kasatria is just so I don't think it's necessary to have a super Gundam when you have the Kasatria which also has a heavy stagger it has it does dumb damage um of course, the player skill and all that, right? But, uh, you know, I didn't mind it here because, uh, yeah, maybe I, I wasn't paying attention if he was hitting his shots or not. But uh, we were doing okay for here, uh, for right now. So, um, for the most part, though, I, I don't I don't think it's a wise idea, to, especially at 700, to double up on, uh, on supports. Uh, this is the map for it, if you want to do that. Uh, you know, the, the, it is possible. Uh, but, you know, I'm fine with it here because it seems like he was hitting his shots. Um, hopefully. <laughs> The, the the few times I did uh, see him, uh, he did he was hitting shots. So hopefully he, he, he during this match he was like hiding up somewhere and uh, taking pot shots because the uh, the super gun does have really good range on its sides uh, on its side not size uh, and does can do some pretty good damage and can heavy stagger and you know the missiles can uh, can be absolutely killer. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> not as killer as the Kasatria's kit. The Kasatria, as I mentioned before, you can tank uh, a lot of uh, potential damage with the Kasatria. The Kasatria shoulder uh, buffers uh, and the eye field that it has is, yeah, you'll be living quite a while unless the enemy team specifically has to avoid the shoulder buffers. And this is the difference between a good Kasatria player and a bad Kasatria player. Uh, I wouldn't say bad even, like, <laughs> uh, I guess if you're fighting a good opponent or a bad opponent. Uh, the Kasatria, a lot of the better Kasatria players that I've seen will try to turn their shoulder buffers towards their enemy. Of course, you know, they're trying to aim up a shot, of course. But some of them will just, um, uh, you know, for dead time, like, uh, if they can, in between shots, if they're just looking at you straight on, and, you know, their chest is open, their body is open, because, you know, it's right between the shoulder, uh, the shoulders, uh, yeah, the binders, there we go, the shoulder binders, uh, yeah, they're, they're just kind of sitting there staring at you, yeah, to take the shot, stun them, like, <laughs> I've been playing the, uh, the new Gundam, uh, lately, that was the suit, that's my go-to suit whenever I'm waiting on, uh, uh, a new 700 suit to pass by with everybody picking it. That's what I do with the Kasatria, and, uh, that's probably what I'm gonna do. Actually, no, I'm, I'm gonna play in the Kasatria even more now, because, uh, <laughs> now everybody's picking the Sinanju, and they're forgetting about the Kasatria. So, yeah, but, you know, I, I have chosen the new Gundam, and I have been doing decently against the Kasatria players. Uh, they forget that, uh, hey, if I aim well enough, I can just hit you and stun you, and then I can follow up for melee, because more than likely, you you're probably not going to have this, uh, uh, the melee resistance. Some people do, and they can survive quite a bit, but, uh, yeah, some people don't, and then I walk up, do, like, a 4,000 damage or 3,000 damage swing, and then follow up with another 4,000, 3,000 swing, and, uh, do some pretty decent damage, a general against a support. Uh, Nixatria is really easy to hit, too. There's a moment here where Stamen actually got a downswing on me, because I didn't think it was going to reach, and I remembered, oh, yeah, my, uh, my shoulder buffers, I'm pretty much the Kraken out here, just, <laughs> just spreading my tentacles around. And he hit the tip of him. But uh, also, <laughs> I was going to make a very dumb joke about, uh, you obviously can see the paint scheme right here. Uh, yeah, I tried to make the uh, the piranha plant <laughs> uh, from Super Mario Bros. And uh, of course, it doesn't really, uh, 
Does it translate too well? I mean, you can kind of, kind of, sort of get it. It looks more like some kind of fucked up Pokemon paint scheme for, a, like, a grass Pokemon, like the flower on it. I don't know what, what Pokemon that would be. Maybe, like, a mixture between Gloom and uh, Chikorita, but... <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it looks, uh, it's kind of funny looking, right? But, uh, I'm pretty sure some people, they would, they, maybe there's one person out there look at it and go, hey, piranha plant. And then they, some people look at it and go, hey, that's a really funny, uh, fucked up Picasso painting you got there. <laughs> but, uh, oh, hey, that guy, I think that guy stunned his own teammate. So uh, let's go here and get the, that's 8,000 damage, literally just down swinging two guys. Nice. And man, just on the, the, uh, Sinanju, but unfortunately, I'm going to die. I don't have zero, uh, I don't have the melee resistance on my suit. I have zero. Uh, this build is what I used for the last video I posted with the Kasatria, where I focused more on uh, reload parts and range attack or range, yeah, range uh, range attack. So uh, I can get out my attacks more if I overheat something. And yeah, the Kasatria definitely works in that range because uh, yeah, that that barrage beam, the the barrage lock on. Absolutely, absolutely melts people. Some people don't even notice that you're firing it at them until it's too late. Uh, you have multiple. You have a stun that you can follow up with for free with your other um, uh, your mega particle cannons on your chest. Uh, you can charge those chest cannons up uh, and then do uh, if you hit all of them 12k damage, which is absurd. Or you know you can charge up the other uh, the other mega particle cannons to get a heavy stagger and then follow up with something else for free for free damage. And you still have a uh, two melee priority, which you saw I like, clashed with somebody. I don't. Rem Does Stamen really have two melee priority? That's really insane to think about that. I clashed with a Stamen, unless it's you know side sw side swings are really weird in this game. So maybe maybe the side swing just uh, has three melee priority for some reason. <laughs> but uh, hey, we're gonna go over here. Uh, too late uh, on rescuing our teammate, but um, we'll see what we can do against this other support. That is the Yagdoga QA, which uh, as I said before, before they uh, they gave it the the uh, machine gun, the what was it called? The the gear the Giradoga machine gun, uh, commander beam machine gun. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a, a shit suit, but <laughs> it's a lot better with that machine gun. It doesn't look like this guy's using it, so I kind of feel bad for him because I can just clearly um, out damage him. He would have to charge up that that shield first, but unfortunately, he's not the GG, so he's not really going to affect me unless one of those four beams manages to hit me. Uh, but hey, this is the perfect place to do a barrage. It's 14,000, almost 15,000 to 10,000, and we have the enemy team backed up to their base. If you guys didn't notice throughout this match or uh, around this part of the match, number three, or number two, our uh, Sinanju, managed to lead the enemy team all the way to their base and then captured B so all of us can spawn on it. And, uh, and then I came up and, well, now we see what's happening here. <laughs> the enemy team got beat and now they're at the, they had to spawn at their base because all their points were taken, pretty much. Um, and yeah, the last, last 30 seconds, just us bullying them. Oh, hey, and hey, uh, there's the, uh, the Stamen. Let's see if he's going to do anything Stamen-like. He's actually, you know, falling back, which, uh, you know, Stamen, they got that itchy melee trigger finger, right? They got to come over here close, right? There he is. Looks like I'm, uh, too busy fighting this guy. No, no, I see you. <laughs> Do the tackle, lights you on fire, smelt you a little bit, and then uh, a really limp-wristed whack on the side of the head with the beam rifle. It's really dumpy looking the way that looks, but... <laughs> and yeah, I uh, managed... I wanted to get my melee out, but uh, I tackled instead. But you know what? I'm fine with that. I managed to live. And hey, timeout. Good works all around. Let's see what we got going on here. Mission complete. And let's see how the piranha plant did today. And, uh, yeah, top individual, top assist, top damage. Uh, yeah, still pretty good. This is my first time picking up after a few days. <laughs> uh, actually, no, it'll be like a week or two. And, uh, yeah, first place, 5-2. and two, And, uh, yeah, the Kasatria is still a incredibly, incredibly powerful suit. It is, it is possible to, uh, to manage it. It's not you know, super extremely busted. Imagine if the Kasatria had the ability, like the Zusa, to just quickly stun people charging towards it. Like, uh, I'm not even talking about, like, the heavy stagger. Like, uh, you just have those missiles on demand. That, that would make actually make the suit really fucking busted, right? Uh, but, uh, no, it does have ways to fight people. It has ways to defend itself, uh, which is really, really appreciated at this cost. Uh, I think I mentioned before the Dagdoll. They, I, I'm trying to remember, they buff it again for these recent buffs? No, I don't think they did, but um, it's just funny to see how fast the Dagdoll just fucking dropped. I'm seeing more Super Gundams than 
uh, you know, like Super Gundams and GPO fours than I've been seeing Dag Dolls recently. And the thing is, Dag Doll's not that bad of a suit. It's just that you're at a cost where everybody just has multiple suns like you do. They have more melee priority or you know more opportunities to that to, for you know they get the melee. You don't have a dodge roll, so more than likely you're just going to be tanking, not even tanking half the time. Like when Easy Z stuns you, that's pretty much game over, right? Uh, Actually, no, nah, no. Nah. If you do have a high melee defense build, you can survive somewhat against uh, against the raids. But then again, uh, a lot of your stuff is like mid range. You're not really much of a sniper, so uh, yeah, they're just go back to bullying you. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be the end of this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you want. I'd really appreciate it. And you know, type up in the uh, the comment section how you feel about the. Uh, uh, I almost tried to combine the piranha plant in with the Cassatria name. I don't. <sighs> Plant Satria? Oh, no. <laughs> but, uh, you know, tell me if you guys like it or not. Uh, of course, you guys heard my opinion on it uh, a couple of times now, and uh, that opinion is slowly becoming fact that the Cassatria is just one of the best suits, uh, best supports in this game. Um, easily, just the, the damage you can do, the utility that you have, the defense that you have that other supports don't get, it is just a, it's just a very good suit overall. And uh, I can't. I'm loving that I'm getting a chance to play it again. Because, like I said, I haven't got a chance to play it in a good bit because of uh, people wanting to play it. Um, and well, now the Sananju is out, and people really want to play the Sananju. Now I get to play the Xatria again, and I get to melt Sananjus. So, <laughs> and you know what? I might pick up the uh, the Super Gundam again at some point. Uh, at least try that out how it is currently, because I, I I literally haven't played any other support of 700 besides. Uh, the Xatria. Maybe I played like the Yag Doga QA for fun, like in a brawl match. I mean like an actual, actual match, right? But uh, yeah, that'll be it, and I will see you guys later. Bye.